You, you ready? Yeah, perfect. All right. Hi, this is Kenny Harper, and this is Experts of Influence, where we interview the most savvy people from around the world, sharing their insights and expertise so that you can grow your business. And today we're going to be chatting with Romaldus Machulis. He is an international business coach, a strategic advisor, and public speaker. His experience includes sales and business development and human behavior changes. He is also a frequent speaker at business sales and marketing and personal development events. Uh, Romaldus works with clients to maximize their full potential and business. And some of his clients include professionals, small business owners, and corporations such as Etihad Airways, KBC Bank, Ulster Bank, uh, Royal Jet, Heineken, Board Gas, and many others. Um, so, welcome, Romaldus. Thank you for joining us today and for sharing your insights. Thank you. Thank you, Kenny. And thank you for a very good introduction. I'm very honored to be on on the show and uh, to be picked to to speak on the show and hopefully I'll I'll share what has worked for me uh, with with your audience and and maybe people will pick up uh, some of those things and I, I really hope they implement them in, in their own life and in their own business. Super cool. And you know where are you tuning in from today, Romaldo? I'm actually I'm uh, tuning in from uh, Vilnius, uh, Lithuania. This is the completely opposite I think side of of the world. It's uh, <laughs> It's it's in Europe. It's it's the east side of Europe uh, uh, by the beautiful Baltic Sea. Um, so we have a big time difference. I think it's uh, evening here, and uh, for you it's um, it's the afternoon. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm very happy to tune in uh, and and to speak to 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 you and, and to your audience. Uh, thank you again. You know that's always interesting. We I tend to think you know it's this time of the day, but then in other places people are just getting up. Maybe they're asleep. Uh, so it's always interesting to connect with other people with such a large time gap. Um, so I want to get, you know, kind of down into it. Uh, today we're going to be talking about, you know, marketing systems. Uh, one of the ways we're connected is through, um, we're both involved with GKIC. And GKIC is full of just, you know, theories, marketing systems, things of that nature. We're both certified medic magnetic marketing advisors. And so I want to get your insights on, you know, how do you leverage marketing systems in your business for yourself and for your clients? And then also um, your story. Uh, so we get a background, how you got started in business and how you got to where you are today. So we'll start with that. Just tell us a little bit about who you are. Where are you about, and how you got to where you're, you're at today? Okay, well, I've uh, very uh, uh, to make uh, the story short. I, I've started working uh, while still in school, I, and I, I was good in computers. I was good in uh, you know uh, internet and computers, uh, but I ended up getting a job, and they, they actually told me I have to sell stuff. I have to sell those computers. And I was like, Jesus, nobody's buying. They were expensive. I was in a small town. And you know, I, I thought, how can I sell them? But they said, no, no, it's your job to sell them. So, um, so, you know, I did the what, what, I, what I thought is smart. I took the yellow pages and I started uh, ringing companies. I thought maybe they have money. And this is how I got started. And I, I spent a lot of my life in sales and, uh, and then ended up um, traveling around the world and became a consultant and, and worked with many great companies. And, and then at some point it hit me that, you know, I, I started to be quite good in sales. I started out very poor and I started to be better and better. But then it hit me that and sales is like doing a theater show where you have to stand on stage every time and you have to perform again, you know, from the very beginning to the very end. And I thought that cannot work forever. And I thought, well, how can, um, you know, how can I change this? Is there a better way? Because for me back then, marketing was like something unknown. I thought these marketing people just wasting money and doing nothing. Um, and that, you know, you, you, you generate your own leads and just uh, call people and, and, and sell. But then I, I thought, no, there must be a, a better way. And um, so this is where I, where I, where I started to, you know, look for information. Um, and, and then well, at some stage, I, I, start, I understood that I don't understand marketing. And I understood that uh, I, I cannot do business if I cannot uh, do marketing. Because if you don't have a client, then you don't really have any business. Um, it's 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 not going to work because um, I mean you or you have to do sales constantly, uh, but that is depending on your, your personal skill or the skill of your people, 
um, and you can't um, and you can't obviously rely on that as a system because I don't think it was very productive. And I had to accept that I don't I'm not good at this and started to look for information, whereas with books, seminars, and then finally hit uh, Dan Kennedy's books and uh, ended up on uh, GKAC as a member. And this is you know uh, leading up to now. So <laughs> so this is my story. Awesome. You know, I shared something with you. You know, I, I went to school for graphic design and multimedia, and I did take some marketing classes. But when I graduated, I, I started working at uh, advertising agencies. And on advertising agencies, we worked on, you know, like these large accounts. Okay. And the, what I found when I left the advertising agency to start working in my own business, that these the strategies that work for large accounts aren't always the same as the ones that work for the, the smaller accounts. Uh, that some of the things can still apply, but some of the tactics and strategies are different. And I found that, you know, really eye-opening uh, for like Dan Kennedy, for example. Okay. You know, uh, you could do branding on a large scale, but if you're a small company, you probably don't need to focus on doing branding on a large scale. So to your point, you know, some marketing may seem like it's pointless. And for the small business owner, it very well may be, depending on what it is and what the goal is. So I thought that was a good point that you, you brought out. Some of it can be, but... The bigger picture, getting people into your pipeline so you can uh, let people know what your value is, uh, the better. Um, so that's that's the bigger picture. Yes, um, and I see it constantly uh, when I work with clients, and, and I, I work a lot with uh, business people uh -huh. because they're naturally the ones who want to grow, they want to change, they want to achieve more in life. Uh, and I work with successful people, but it's the successful ones, they want to work more, they want yes. to achieve more. And, and then uh, when sometimes I, I, I see them and, and, and they, they, they don't understand why they're not getting results with their marketing and with their, with their, with their business development. And they are trying to copy some other people uh -huh. and they either copy companies, other companies, they copy their marketing, uh, but they're copying someone who doesn't who do marketing that doesn't work. So obviously it doesn't work for them as well. So they're copying something that doesn't work. Sometimes they're copying companies that are bigger, much bigger, and it's completely a different story for them. So big company might be trying not to lose uh, customers, you know, where they're trying to gain customers to have different budgets. They have different rates for the same, uh, you know, amount of time on air for the same amount of print uh, space. They're, they're not competing in, in, in a wise way and they're not getting the results. And, and this is what I have to explain to people. You know, you have to understand who you are and what is working for you and what you want. And, and I, I, that's, that's just, you know, people don't ever think that they need to think about this. And this is, I think, a shame. Uh, I think this is where a lot of people get it wrong because, um, you know, everybody's situation is different. Every business owner is different. They have different values. They, they think about different things. Like uh, a person who loves, um, and naturally loves communicating, probably be much better in sales and, and meeting clients and talking to clients. And there's other business owners who are really like financial type of guys, systems guys, really list type of guys. And if they try to do business in the same way, and if they try to copy someone, um, you know, from their industry or outside their industry, but different size, different circumstances, it usually fails, uh, and it gives no results. Um, uh, good for me because I've seen a lot of these failures that I've made a lot of these mistakes. I've made a lot of stupid moves, and it's the thing. It's it's the things that don't work that teach us um, teach us the most sometimes. That's that's an important part uh, that you you bring up. And yeah, I went to an event last year. It was a pretty cool event called Plan the Attack. And one of the things, um, the guy Jeff uh, Davis, who had opened up this event, he said, be prepared to fail. Uh, <laughs> everyone in here through this year is going to fail. It's, it's part of the journey. And you've got to understand and expect that you can't completely avoid failure because failure teaches. Uh, so I thought that was is a really kind of positive way of looking at, you know, we're going to have failures, but if you learn from them, then it's good. It's all good. We just don't want to repeat them. That's the, that's the thing. Well, I, and I think you have to, uh, you have to also learn from them something. If you keep, keep repeating them, I mean, it's, you haven't really failed to enough. Uh, you haven't uh, gotten the lesson. And I, I remember some really, um, uh, really stupid things that I've done. 
Um, but then when I actually looked back and I said, well, what is wrong with this? Why is it not working? Mm. Um, it, you always find the answer. You always find the answer if you, if you ask the right questions. And I think um, the quality of somebody's uh, business and their business development, the quality of their life eventually depends a lot on what kind of questions they ask themselves. Like if they ask themselves questions um, you know, that lead them the wrong path, so if they, if they ask, okay, well, who should I copy? What are others doing? Well, that's not going to give you a good result. I think it's wise to ask questions. Uh, what is working from what I'm doing? Can I maximize that? Um, or like this piece didn't produce a result. Well, you know, what were the steps in this? Uh, is maybe one of the steps is just not working. No, not the whole thing is not working. Not that marketing is not working. I have so many people tell me, oh, I know marketing. We've tried marketing. It doesn't work. We've tried advertising. It doesn't work. And they've convinced. And, and I used to get really upset and I said, how can you say it's not more like people spend billions on this? Obviously, they wouldn't if it doesn't work. And then when I actually started to work with my clients and asked them, well, what did you do? So they got approached by a sales guy selling them some print space, you know, and then a magazine. And they said, yeah, just put in your ad and, you know, and you're going to have sales and you're going to have a huge uh, profit. And they sell the space, and then the guy said, okay, well, I don't have actually an ad. But I said, no worry, we're going to give you an ad. We're going to write an ad for you. We're going to write the text. We're going to do the graphics for free, you know, just take the ad. So, um, and then they got a student, you know, in the office to just kind of bang on with uh, Microsoft Paint or, or something. And, uh, <laughs> and, and that happens every day. And then, of course, they don't get a result. So that's, so, that's a great point you, you have there. Uh, you don't put a full strategy in place. You do one piece of the puzzle and you don't get the thing to work for you. And then you try to throw the cat out with the bathwater. So, uh, yeah, that's really important. Wow, it's yeah, great. Can, yeah, can, well, if they would even do one, one thing right, you know, if they would do one puzzle piece right, that would be okay. You know, it might still work to a, to a degree, but, it, you know, if, if they get that puzzle wrong even so it's like they're trying to 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 to, to work with this puzzle and they're, they're they don't even have the right pieces you know they don't have the right uh, shapes of the pieces and you know and they try it they try it once the brave ones they try it twice and then they say no marketing doesn't work so I, you know and and they stop and then they they rely on random events on word of mouth and and, and other things but you know if it works it's even worse because then they get business automatically. But then when the economy changes and it always goes in cycles uh, and they don't have a marketing system, well, you know you know what? Those automatic things stop working and you're not growing with the market because the market is shrinking. And then they really, these are the guys that get, get hit the most and they have really good business when the general economy is doing well. And then when you have a recession, and it's not if you're going to have a recession, you will have these cycles, not as extreme always maybe, but you will always have the cycles. It's the, those guys are going to hit the, the most. Um, so this is what I always tell my clients. You know, you don't want to be depending on something that's not a system, that's something that is one, something is not predictable, um, yeah, because because that's not the way to, to, to do the business because, I mean, things are going to happen and it's going to fail. Uh, very great advice. You know, right now, um, at the time that we're recording this, uh, GKIC, Dan Kennedy, they're kind of, they're rebooting, relaunching their 25, 25 year anniversary of magnetic marketing, a uh, groundbreaking marketing system that has helped people to revolutionize their internal marketing. I'm familiar with it. You're familiar with it. Um, but you're probably also familiar with marketing other marketing systems systems of your own systems that you work with what are some of the typical challenges that someone may encounter when they're going to start implementing a marketing system you have a system that's great you have a game plan a blueprint that's awesome but what are the some of the challenges that that people may encounter when they try to implement the system and then how do you overcome them yeah, and I, I can really uh, um, uh, re resonate uh, with that question because I've, I've, got, I've purchased magnetic marketing and, you know, I said, finally I found something that looks good, you know, and I said, I'm going to just go in and implement it. So I wrote some letters and I kind of selected who to mail it to 
and I mailed some letters and I thought that's it, you know, I'm just going to mail the letters and, you know, and, uh, you know, and obviously I had to uh, adjust them a little bit and I thought that's just going to automatically make me rich and I was so proud and then I got in zero results. You know? I, okay, that's, that's something. And then I thought, okay, I did something wrong. I mailed one letter. So I'm going to do now three letters, one letter, second letter, third letter. Um, and I, 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 I wrote a letter. It took me like you know ten minutes. I spent on this and <laughs> and banged off uh, two hundred of these, I think. And then another follow up and another follow up. And the only response I got was from two companies saying, um, "Can you please stop sending us those letters?" <laughs> so and and they actually phoned in and they phoned in on the number provided. They were supposed to phone in to get the, uh, get a free consultation uh, offer or, or something. And then they said, "No, can you just stop sending those letters?" Um, and then I thought, okay, so um, so to do this right, um, it you you cannot expect to just purchase a system, a tool, a template, some software, you know, some new software, a webinar jam, or some uh, or, you know new CRM system or something. And and I think where people get it wrong in implementing it, they think the tool is magically gonna do the business, you know, gonna get the tool, and uh, because of this, what's the it's the people selling the tools. Is what they tell him, and uh, not Dan Kennedy. To to be fair, you know they they, they always stress that you need to implement, but uh, pe people they don't want to hear it. They don't want to they don't want to hear about implementation. They just want to get money now. Uh, but unfortunately, they, you know there's a different there's another side to that. There's work actually involved. Uh, so when people get infatuated with the tool, with a new CRM system, marketing automation system, a planning system, um, a, a system of posting uh, on social media, and the they expect quick results without any uh, effort. And then they get the tool, the novelty wears off, and nothing is happening. And then in their mind, what's happening, they think, I've done the step, I've put in the money. Because if, when, when people put in the money, psychologically, they feel that they're making something happen. So when they purchase something, they feel I'm doing something. So they purchase the tool, they purchase the book, they purchase the seminar, and they feel I've done something. Where is my reward? Uh, but it's not enough to do this. So, so, so actually, you have to do the work. So, if you get a tool, it's just a tool that's blank. If you get a system, great. You have a step-by-step -step guide, which, and you have templates. But you really need to uh, not do what I did. You cannot spend ten minutes where, to write a letter that you you mail to two hundred companies, and uh, without really you know thinking through. Uh, what are they worried about? What do they want? What would be interesting to them? Why would they want to read it? Why would they want to respond? Why would they want to uh, take the offer that you're giving them? You know, if, it doesn't matter if it's a free offer. If, if, if their offer is no good, I mean, it's not going to work. So so I think the biggest challenge is, is people expect um, something that is, is, is not possible. And I, and I think it was Buddha who said, you know, uh, people suffer from, because of two things. Number one, they're trying to get something that's not possible. So achieve something that's not achievable. And number two, they're trying to avoid something um, that's unavoidable. So they're trying to avoid the work, which doesn't work. And they're trying to get, um, uh, basically, you know, uh, get rich quick and get, get clients fast. And it's also, you know, it's, it's not realistic. So you can get a lot of customers in a very short time when you have the marketing assets, when you have the system, when it's implemented. But in, no, in none of those systems did it ever say that you can just buy it. Right. Because if that would be uh, that easy, you know, we would all just buy a system and just go to sleep, wouldn't we? You articulated that very well, my friend. Uh, that was that was a great thing. That's definitely in the highlight reel of information because, you know, you've seen it too. Sometimes people will buy something that is a proven product. It has proven results, case study after case study. And then they'll buy it. They'll try it like that short little attempt and then they don't get the immediate result and they point the finger at the system or at the person who sold the system or everything else. But, you know, having gone through the full process and really implemented it. Um, so it's like, if you're going to buy a health weight loss system, buying the system, <laughs> having it in your house and then people, and <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And as, and as you say, and then people feel bad and they blame themselves and they blame themselves and they feel down. And um, actually, it's not people's fault. 
I, I have many years that I've been studying human psychology and, 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 uh, and human behavior. And this is, um, I understand now why this is happening. So people are trying to get a reward. They're tricking themselves into feeling they're doing something by just making the purchase. Uh, but why are they not implementing it? That's the question, Kenny. Why are they not doing the work? Because it's all there. It's, you know, step by step. You do this, you know, write this, post it there. Um, but the problem is because most people, and this is the majority of people I work with, they don't actually see how doing the work is going to help them achieve what they want in life. They have a dream that they want a bigger business. They have a fantasy that they want a financial freedom and so on. But it, but they, but it's not actually always true. And uh, and when you look at, at their life, actually, you can see what, what is the reality. Where are they spending their time? Where are these guys spending their money? Where are they spending their energy? Uh, where are they spending their, their focus? What are, where are they very disciplined? This is the things that are truly important to them. And, and then people, you know, um, you know, they get motivated and they think I buy a system or, and I do something, but because they see no connection to their values, they don't do it. So, so the key is to understand what, what your value hierarchy is as a business owner, as, as a businessman. And then you find how you can link that to the actual steps you need to do to grow the business and to market the business. And, and, and once you do, you'll have no doubts about implementing it. You, you don't need any reminders. And you will have these creative ideas, what you can do and what's possible. You, you have, you'll have these breakthroughs, but, but not until you link to what's important to you as a person uh, to actually developing the business. So you have your... Uh you know, your entity of who you are as a person. And if you just put the system as a bandaid on top, it may do some superficial, maybe something happens, but you've really got to get down into that core uh, and, and tap into that core reason and, and not just have it as that superficial fix, but it really must be kind of like a lifestyle change or just like if someone's losing weight as we use in, example a moment ago if you really want to lose weight you don't get on a diet you got to change your lifestyle otherwise yes, it's going to be but, temporary well how do you do that so so how do people do that how and i mean it, it, you're not going to just change it you know it's, it's not that you wake up and say okay i'm going to change it mm -hmm. so the key is first of all they have to understand what is valuable for them in their life in the first place so this is the the first thing i do with clients is we determine we determine what is their value system as a person because if they're not seeing something, some return uh, for them as a person in doing the business and growing the business and marketing the business, they're not going to do it. They're just not going to. You can give them all the tools, all the advice, all the software, all the support, all the outsourcers, the content ideas. Um, um, you can bring clients to them and they will not make business with them. They will make business to the same level, plus, plus or minus. Uh, but but it's not going to shift and it's not going to really you know uh, go to the next stage um, until until they do this. Um, so I, I've actually written a guide about this uh, and and I, and I give it to and I'd be happy to share it to your audience as well. Definitely, uh, uh, and we can do this at the end and provide them a link. Uh, but 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 there's a step by step process to understanding what is important to you. So basically, you look at your life and you see where you're spending your time. Where are you organized? Where do you set goals and have progress? What do you visualize? Uh, uh, what, what is the day-to-day -day thing uh, you, you, you want to spend energy on? And, and you know, I have 13 questions like this and that truly show what's important to a person. Um, because most people I come in contact uh, with and, and they come for consults and, 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 and they are fooling themselves. They say, okay, business development is important for me. But when we look at their life, uh, sometimes children are on the first place and, 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 and learning is on the first place uh, or second place and spending time with friends is the first or second and spending time. And I'm not saying this is good or bad, like this is just the way it is. But I say, if this is your hierarchy of values, you're not going to grow the business. You're not going to have that financial level that you want. It's just not going to happen. And it's not bad. It can be fine. If, you, if this is what you want, just accept it. Stop fighting yourself and, 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 you know, and, and, and be where you are. But if you do want to change this, well, first to determine what, what it is. And then if you want to change it, you have to make those links. Like, 
how is developing and marketing my business is so you say children are number one for you okay so it's a number one thing in your life is children and, and a lot of people have that as a number one goal so if they don't see how developing the business is going to help them be with their children they're not going to do them you know they're going to just spend time with their children and so on because they think i'm either doing one or the other and then you know they're with their children and they feel guilty that they're not developing the business or they're developing their business and trying to be in the office and meet clients or do some marketing uh, but they're feeling guilty that they're not seeing their kids or, or their partners is making them feel guilty because maybe they have kids as, as they are at that uh, but i'm not saying you have to say no to one or the other i say link it so if you find reasons for yourself how developing the business can help you be a better father how can that help you uh, spend more time with your children and find ways how you can do this? And if you find 50 benefits, 100 benefits, 200 benefits of this, this is actually then people get, wow, I thought it's the opposite. But now I can see I can have both. How, you know, how can you do the business and see your children? How can doing the business help you see more of your children and, and get better education for your children and get better you know, um, services for your children? And, and when you see that and not the end result, like I'm going to make a pile of money and then I'm going to kind of pay back and, you know, and then I'm going to have the time with my children. No, it might be too late, but then you, they, they might be gone um, and you, you, they might not even know what your name is. So I'd say it's wise to link the process of actually building the business and doing the marketing and doing those steps, you know, how is doing that helping you? How can it help you? And, and then you do some reverse psychology and say, okay, well, if, if children are important for me, how can spending time with my children, um, you know, help me build a business? And at first people think, well, there's no connection. No, it's not true. Like, if you look at the people uh, doing tons of marketing online, I, like I've seen a, a post uh, from Russell Branson who is selling um, uh, a software system they have. Uh, click funnels and and he's just there at home hanging with this uh, daughter and you know somebody's filming him and is making an offer for his uh, high-end consulting um, um, you know uh, consulting gig that's I think at 50,000 per year or 40,000 per year uh, in dollars and he's just there you know in his home and you know uh, being there with this child and and you know and casually explaining that you know there's a few spots open and you know they stole those spots in a matter of uh, in, in the matter of the hour probably, and who can say that that's not possible? Exactly. You know, I was going to ask you, I was going to ask you one of the things that made you unique, but I think you've already kind of demonstrated that in this conversation because you're not solely just focused on just business, just marketing. It's kind of the the bigger. St- the bigger picture of, you know, what do you really want in your life and letting that be the fuel and making sure that you have that mindset. Cause if you don't have the right mindset, then this isn't it's, really going to work. And, and, and you're completely right. And, and uh, actually when you, you find your own wise and you need to find your own wise and you care about yourself and what is your why? Well, if you care about yourself, you can care about other people and to do business, you just need a few simple things. You need to care about the clients. If you care about the clients, if you can't wake up in the morning to serve the clients, to have to, to give your service to the clients, you will have clients. You will find ways to find them. I mean, you will go through pain and pleasure to find them. You will do everything that you need to do to find them. And they will do everything they need to do uh, to find them. Like I had a really good radio interview recently and, and, and they had no contact details, but people were so inspired. They, they found a way to find me. And I, I got people who found me. They, they've invited me to, to, to do talks in their companies and, and, and to speak because, because I really cared about an interview about providing some value to people. But you cannot understand this if you don't look at yourself and what's valuable to you. How can you then look at your potential clients and understand what's valuable for them? Because if you give them what's valuable for them in the way that's valuable for them uh, and, and make a fair offer, people are going to take it. Speaking of which, (laughs) yes, I was going to say, you mentioned earlier, you did have an offer that other people maybe uh, can may value. And if you'd like to share that, that would be great. I, 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 and, and and because I'm, I'm really uh, grateful for this opportunity to come onto your show and to speak to you, um, to your audience. I actually have a guide um, that is, that is uh, mainly 
used by business people, but not only by business people. I actually had moms reading it at home, and they said they got as much value out of this because it's the same principles everywhere. Um, but it's a, it's a seven-step guide of how can you determine those values, uh, how can you understand what's important to you, is, is the questions you need to ask yourself, and, and then how you make links between those values and, and building the business, uh, and then actually how you, how you, you know, build the business and, and in, in a very simple way, what are the key things that help you focus on, on the main steps and how you manage your time and other people. Uh, and I'd like to share that with, with your audience. So if you would provide a link uh, that, I'm, that, 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 uh, that I can give you, uh, people can just go onto, onto the website and just download that and, and, uh, and they'll get a bonus with that. They, they'll get the guide and a printable a mind map uh, that some people let's say, uh, you know, that's a good reminder for me to just print out so they don't lose track of the, of the steps. Super cool. Well, definitely, I'm going to make sure that when this is published, we're going to put the link along with the video. We'll put it in the in the text form as well. So we'll make sure that everyone gets that. Um, we'll figure out what the link is. If you're um, you're definitely perfect. going to see it when you're watching this. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And I'm, I'm grateful for, um, to share this. I think it's going to help a lot of people clarify. And I had very good response from people reading it. Um, they said, finally, I understand why I wasn't implementing everything that I knew already. They have the knowledge, they have the skills to build a business, they have everything, but they're not doing this. So this was the answer to why they're not doing this. And uh, for those who choose, how can you make sure you do this without any outside motivation? I love it. Uh, a couple more questions. Uh, real quick, do you have any um, inspirations that have influenced you or any podcasts that you've listened to, any books that you've read that you'd like to share with other people uh, to consider reading for the, or watching themselves? Um, uh, well, because I, I think um, your audience might already be exposed to uh, books by Dan Kennedy and mm -hmm. GKC. Um, and so I think that they know about this already, which, which I, I read all of them. I read all, I just got the new ones uh, also, and they're, they're try, trying to get them in the post now. Um, but uh, what I would recommend people read is if there's one book they can read and really, really, uh, that can change the way they organize their life and their business, I would suggest they read The Seven Steps of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. And, and, and this is the, the book that they must read to understand, you know, how to look at the bigger picture. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, it, lets you, it lets you step back and look at your life and see, you know, what is the angle? Like, where are you heading? Because if you don't know where you're heading, it doesn't matter where you go. Uh, and, and, but then life will just pass. Life will pass and we all have limited number of days left. You know, you know, you about 16,000, well, what were you kidding? 15,000 days left. <laughs> so it's gonna, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna end, but let's make the most out of it. So that's, 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 uh, one of, one, one of the books I recommend. I also recommend uh, books and audio um, around something that Dan Kennedy mentions in some of his seminars, some of his talks, and he used to own the foundation uh, uh, that produced these books, and it's psychocybernetics. And so I, I don't know if you if you read it or if you heard about this uh, psychocybernetics. So 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 Maxwell Maltz uh, was uh, was. Um, I was a beauty surgeon, basically, and, and a plastic surgeon who uh, uh, was doing uh, operations. And then he looked at his patients, and it was years ago. And you looked at sometimes, you know, when he changed somebody's faces, that amazing changes occurred in that person's life. And he was amazed because people got more confident, they got better jobs, they got better uh, partners, they got better, you know, um, um, second, um, you know, second careers and so on. Well, in some patients, there was no change, even though he changed their face. And he went back to those cases and analyzed what was that. So, so he found that actually the outside image uh, the person has is just one part. And there's actually an inside image, so inner image that people have. So if people uh, still after an operation, they felt ugly, they would still act the same way and they would repulse people from them and do everything to make sure that other people do not approach them and that they don't get opportunities to meet as much people and so on. And they become really interested in why, you know, how, how can you change that? And can and you really need an operation on your face to feel better? And the answer was actually no. And, and, and it's actually, uh, psycho-cybernetics is a, is a term he coined and that, uh, that explains of how 
what's the thinking patterns behind this and how you can actually actively work on your self-image and your self-worth and, 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 you know, why you should do this and how you can do this and what kind of results it, it will give you. So, so it's not very popular uh, because it's not hype. It's actually stuff that works, but there's a catch. Uh, you have to do that stuff. <laughs> you, you have to actually take time out to think, to plan, to write, to reflect, and, and to work with yourself. And, and the, the most um, uh, successful people I know, they take you know up to four hours a day to work on themselves. Uh, and uh, you know, if I don't know if it's true, but I, I think the president of of United States, uh, he used to do this because uh, a gentleman I learned from, uh, Dr. John F. Demartini who is one of the best behavioral uh, specialists in the world. He used to live on the, on the same, um, in the same building as, as Donald Trump, and he got to know him. And, and he said that, uh, that it's a completely different person to what we see on TV, obviously, uh, but that is really, really focused and really spends uh, four times, uh, four hours a day uh, uh, reading and uh, doing personal development, so working with himself. So, so if it's good, good enough for the, for the president, uh, I think we should try it at least. Um, uh, regardless if we, if, we, if, we, if, if we like him or not, I think he has some, uh, some good advice. So psycho-cybernetics is, is the second one. Do you want me to recommend the third one or, or are we good? <laughs> um, well, those are, those are some good recommendations. Um, I do appreciate you for sharing all your expertise and insights. Uh, we'll definitely connect and, and get that um, opportunity so other people can download that um, after the fact. Uh, any other closing thoughts you'd like to share as we're kind of wrapping up this particular session? Um, well, if people get one thing out of this, I would like them to stop, think and reflect. Because if they're doing something that is not working, there must be a reason for this. There is always a reason. And I think this the reason is that they haven't really thought this through as a person and how to link what's important for them as a person to the way they do the business so so to take the questions that are in my guide it's a free gift uh, ask yourself the questions write down the answer take some time out to do this and everybody who has done this they always have results uh, so if you do one thing just implement uh, what, what we're giving you here uh, and you will get results and when, when you give results um, uh, you know then share it with other people around you and uh, you know help other people to do the same so so that's my my message awesome thank you so much Romualdis. we appreciate you uh sharing your expertise look forward to connecting with you in the future and uh, that will be it for this round of experts of influence thank you thank you kenny and although we're still technically being recorded this part will get edited out um perfect so Thank you. Thank you for the uh, opportunity. And, and I, I was very surprised though. you have, it seemed like from the studio, you have a very nice mic. Uh, it's beautiful. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, sets the scene. I'm, um, uh, I'm very, uh, very impressed and you have all the software organized. So, uh, so that's, that shows that um, this stuff is important for you as a person. Um, so, so, you know, it's, it's the stuff we do because if you wouldn't be organized, uh, and have the software, have the tools, uh, have the, you obviously have better lighting than me and have the good mic. Um, so, uh, you know, that, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be where you are, I think. So, so that's, uh, that's again, I hope, I, uh, what I shared was useful to people. It was you great. You know, so much to say always. And the problem is, you know, try to condense and to just get to the facts. But, you know, I do like to talk, which is a, a, a huge disadvantage. But hopefully there's some good points that people uh, people will get from this. Um, there was some really good stuff in there. I, I appreciate it. Um, I look forward to connecting right now. Just uh, we're recording kind of like the we, we had done some um, past interviews and stuff, but we're kind of like relaunching this experts of influence sort of thing. So we've got some pilots right now or we're recording as we produce these, we're going to be sending it out, scheduling them so we can highlight them and you'll get all that information as that comes out. Um, good stuff. Good stuff. Forward. Good stuff. And do you have the, the link uh, for the, um, for the actual book that I sent you before? I did get that link. If that's the link you'd like me to share, I could use that one. If you had a different one, I could use that too. Um, um, yeah, if you, if you just if you just take that link that I sent you, uh, and just that's the link that takes people to the landing page. Is that the one that you had? Yes. Yeah. So just do that. It's it's um, 
it's uh, it's uh, it has a tag I think on it. So so we'll see how many people download uh, uh, because it's nice to see your statistics because then we know that you know something clicked and people download it and then you know if they download it, it's a good chance they used it uh, and you know if they used it. It's always a result. There's always a result. But it's, the trick is to using it. And people just don't, can you really? You know, nine out of ten. If when I give and especially if you give free advice, Jesus Christ. Nine right. out of ten. Don't do anything. Just 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 write them down. I stop doing this or or or, or I just say anything now. And and I know they're not gonna do this, but um but it's it's for people like us, I think it's part of our mission. If you have an audience, if you have a group, if you have a chapter of something. Uh, if you can get one person across the line in actually inspiring them to do something, not motivating them and, and kind of, you know, and, and, and pushing them, but inspiring them to, to, to cross the line and implement something. Okay. I think then, then, you know, you've done a, a great thing and a great service uh, for that person and, and, and that, and that, uh, you know, and whatever they're doing and, and it's going to impact other people. So, so this is very, I'm very thankful to, to be on your show. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, we'll be in touch. Uh, we'll stay in contact. I look forward to connecting again in the future, my friend. Perfect. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Have a wonderful evening. You too. Bye. Ciao.